Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for October 2nd, 2022, could on 11 a.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the threat for more tropical cyclones. Yes, more tropical cyclones that could be forming in the Atlantic Basin over the next couple of days. What's next after Hurricane Ian? So let's go on and jump straight into everything. So real quickly, before we jump into that, this is Hurricane Ian as it crosses Cuba. And we're going to take a look at some of the data that we observed from Hurricane Ian as we were chasing in Arcadia, Florida. So as some of you may know, we were chasing Hurricane Ian here in Arcadia, Florida. We'll zoom into exactly where we were. This is the CBS store that we were actually at here. And uh, it's just crazy to see this. This is what it looks like normally right now. But this is where we were right here in the CVS pharmacy on the back side here as we were covering Hurricane Ian. This is the view that we were looking at. Just absolutely incredible. And we're going to look at some of the data that we managed to get. Taking a look here at some of the data that we got in Hurricane Ian, we can see that we had started off at 12 o'clock starting our recording with the pressure data. And we had a pressure of 1,002 millibars. That quickly dropped throughout the afternoon. You can see here, because this is an hour increment, you can see kind of the sporadic pressure falls here. And this is actually related to how the storm moved and behaved. Of course, that the storm was moving a little bit slower than expected at some points. And so our pressure kind of remained static here for almost about three hours. We can see that the pressure only fell about a good four millibars, you know, four to five millibars or so. And so we didn't really have a lot of pressure falls. And then eventually, as we started getting here into the core of the storm, the pressure started to fall more rapidly. And then we got down to a pressure of 970 in Arcadia, Florida. And then we drove into the eye, which gave us a pressure of 959 millibars at about 7 o'clock Eastern Time. And then that continued to rise as we escaped the eye wall. And by about 10 o'clock, we were just south of, or just to the east, of, really, of the Cluiston area, to the south and east of Cluiston. And kind of in that general vicinity, we recorded a pressure of about 992 millibars. Uh, we can see here that this is the official measurement I got on my uh, barometer here. This shows a pressure of 959 millibars at a pressure of a altitude of about 1,500 feet. And this is pretty uh, accurate. So this is within a 2% uh, accuracy here. So this was uh, roughly about 957 to 959 millibars that we recorded right in the eye here. And we can see this is actually a shot that I got in the eye of the storm. You can see that the eye wall is back here and we have these clear blue skies up here that are just off the screen. Uh, the eye was beginning to rapidly fill in at this point and of course we are starting to lose uh, daylight. Uh, but if you do want to see the full video including the eye uh, penetration here, you guys can go then and watch uh, the video, which will be linked uh, in the cards up above here. Those videos were posted yesterday of my chase in the eye wall and the eye of Hurricane Ian. And as far as the wind data here, we were able to get some pretty strong wind gusts here and sustained winds. You can see starting off at about 12 o'clock here, this is the observed from our anemometer uh, here. We recorded a sustained wind at 12 o'clock at about 40 knots, so that these are all in knots. So translate this to miles per hour. This is about 45 miles per hour with the gust closing in on 55. We well, noticed during the height of the storm, the observed peak wind was 90 knots or about 105 miles per hour. Um, we were unable to get anything higher than that because it was a little bit too uh, strong and so we likely had a sustained winds closer to 100 to 110 knots uh, which would put this solidly into the category 3 range and then we had gusts that were observed up towards 115 knots at times again this is an accuracy within about five percent uh, so we had uh, the winds here that were gusting well into Category 3 range, likely seeing Category 4 potentially very close to Category 5 gusts at times. This is an official wind reading from Josh Griffith here. This was one of our chase partners. He recorded 112 mile per hour uh, gust here in the eye wall as we were escaping uh, Arcadia, Florida, trying to get into the eye and trying to get out of there before the western eye wall. So some very strong winds that were observed from this system, no doubt. Again, the full video is up on YouTube if you do want to go uh, look at it. But for sure, if you guys want to see more of this type of stuff, make sure to subscribe to the channel and make sure to share this to your friends and family because we plan to do chases like these and bring live breaking content to you guys. 
Taking a look here at the visible satellite imagery from this morning, we noticed that we have two systems to monitor out there right now. We have a tropical disturbance near the Cabo Verde Islands. This will likely go on to become our next tropical cyclone. And then we have a new system that is perking up now to the east of the Lesser Antilles. This will also have to be monitored as it moves westward across the tropical Atlantic over the next couple of days and into the Caribbean. Nothing to worry about right now, but we'll show you here on the map where this might end up going. If you take a look here at the tropical weather outlook from this morning, we notice that we have two areas of disturbance right now. We have an area in the eastern tropical Atlantic. This is unlikely to go on and become any sort of land threat. Uh, then we have this area to the east of the Lesser Antilles right now. This will have to be monitored very closely as this gets into the Caribbean. The upper level environment seems pretty favorable for additional development once this gets to near Jamaica, as similar to Ian actually. If you look here at the GFS 850 millibar vorticity here, this is the spin in the atmosphere at about 5,000 feet off the ground. This is the 060 run coming off the GFS valid 480 in this morning. We notice that there's not really much going on across the tropical Atlantic right now. Of course, this right now is the remnants of Ian. Of course, this came over here and slammed southwest Florida. And we have some great footage on what the conditions were like down there in Arcadia, which is unfortunately destroyed at the moment. And then this kind of made landfall as another hurricane and then is now just kind of being parked up here, been producing some heavy rainfall. But we noticed that again, we will have to watch. Maybe there's the potential that this could reinvigorate as it comes off the coast here, maybe tries to develop back into another TC quickly before weakening. Uh, not really expecting any significant impacts there, but we noticed this system down here in the Caribbean. The GFS actually is perking this wave up, and we noticed the last couple of runs have been certainly trending towards a more amplified system in the short term. Now, in the long term, again, this is our next system that tries to develop out here in the eastern Atlantic. Uh, the GFS doesn't really do a whole lot with this wave. Again, it just kind of meanders it around for several days and then tries to eventually spin it up down here. Um, but again, this is, you know, talking a few days out. If we look at the upper level wind environment, again, right now, the upper level environment isn't particularly hostile for development, but we notice that similar to Ian, there is going to be this upper level low sitting right here. And again, typically this would be unfavorable. However, it will be unfavorable in a sense. It will create some strong shear, but this is also creating a little bit of a convergence there at the surface. And this would allow for thunderstorm and convective activity to perk up similar to the genesis of Ian. And then eventually this gets down there into the Caribbean where the upper level environment, according to the EPS here, becomes increasingly favorable. Uh, you can see an upper level anti-cyclone up there, deep easternlies here. So there's not really anything to indicate to me that this would have a hard time finding itself in favorable conditions in the Caribbean. Uh, but we noticed that there's a pretty strong belt of shear down here in the Florida area and in the Gulf Coast. So anything that comes and tries to sneak its way through here would likely be sheared to bits here. But again, we're talking about a forecast that is still several days to about weeks out at this particular point. Uh, so it is imperative to keep checking back on the forecast. But again, we will have to watch the Caribbean. The upper ocean heat content from this morning, from this morning is still not really a uh, change from what we were looking at even just a few days ago. Again, uh, there is still widespread upper ocean heat content, still deep warm waters and moisture for systems to take advantage of in the Caribbean. So there's no reason to believe uh, that as of right now, things are going to be just dead silent down there. And uh, unfortunately, again, there's no rest for the weary and there will be something to monitor. Now, if you look at the 500 millibar heights here, we'll look at the 500 millibar height anomalies uh, around the same time. Uh, again, there is going to be a general weakness in the ridge sometime by about the 9th of October. So this is within uh, next week. We're talking about some type of weakness out here. Again, the placement of these troughs and ridges will vary. Uh, but there will s seemingly be some type of weakness that will be sitting out here for quite some time. Uh, generally speaking, this might allow for a stronger storm to try to gain latitude. But again, um, we're going to have to see. This is a pattern that is you know, many days, many weeks out. So continue to check back on the forecast. The EPS ensembles at this particular point aren't really too interested. Again, there is some activity down there. But mostly they keep it confined into the southwestern part 
of the Caribbean and kind of down here closer towards Central America. So I'm not really deeply concerned about any significant impacts at this particular point. But again, it is imperative to continue to monitor the progress of this system because, of course, you know, things can and will change between now and then. All right. So with that being said, I do hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali, and I'll be talking to you guys again some more tomorrow.